Hello everyone, it's Free Name on YouTube and it's always a good day when some new tech appears in the post. This time it is a TP-Link Aginet or Aginet um, EX230V AX1800 Wi-Fi dual band, uh, Wi-Fi 6 gigabit and VoIP enabled router. So the Aginet, or Age Aginet brand is what TP-Link sell to internet providers. So if you go out to a shop, you won't be able to buy this just off the shelf. On the box, it says the model number and the stuff I've already read you. Nothing exciting there. Uh, on the underside, it says package contents. We've got Wi-Fi 6 VoIP router, EX230V, RJ11 phone cable. Uh, RJ45 Ethernet cable, power adapter, quick installation guide, and a postal address in Hong Kong. This side says Easy Mesh, which is interesting. I'll see if I can find another Easy Mesh device and see if they will join, one that isn't a TP Link brand device. Um, VoIP calls, um, multiple uh, MooMimo. Uh, multiple user, multiple input, multiple output, beamforming, and then it's got a sticker on it with the UK TP-Link address. And then a model number and serial number, part number, etc. On the other end it's got specifications, so the wireless is 1201 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz and 574 megabits per second on 2.4. It's got 1 gigabit WAN port, 3 gigabit LAN ports, 1 USB 2 port, a telephone port, easy mesh compatible, mesh protocol is 802.11k slash v slash r, uh, multiple SSID support, airtime fairness, band steering, WPA3 support with uh, some stars, but I don't see anything that relates to the star on the side there. Uh, VPN, whatever that means, so can it be VPN server or a VPN client? We will find out. IPv6 support or compatible parental controls, we'll also test that and make sure it works. Simple installation, thanks to intuitive web interface and powerful Aginet, our Aginet app. Yippee! Right, what do the stars mean? So we've got what, uh, two stars on WPA3 encryption. Um, aha. Use of Wi-Fi 6 and features including OFDMA, ULDL, MooMimo, and WPA3 require client to also support the features. Well, yes. Okay, that seems... Fairly standard to me. Right, let's see what is inside the box. Oh, that one's taped up, that end, for some reason. Have a look at this end. Looks like it's been opened before, so this isn't brand new. We have the router itself, which I actually think is quite stylish. Installation guide, which I'll go through in a moment. RJ11 cable, Ethernet cable, power lead, yeah. and probably some legal stuff to do with. Oh, interesting, I'll read that in a moment. Oh, I was just saying if you can't connect to Wi Fi 6, make sure your stuff's up to date and your drivers are up to date. The power supply is a model TI. 20150-2D1 and it outputs 12 volts 1.5 amps and just looks like a fairly standard jack on the end of that. The router itself we've got wow a massive bunch of status lights so TP-Link logo top left very nice front of the device um, try not to swamp out the camera we've got in fact let me change that better. Uh, power, internet light, presumably 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi light, ethernet status light, oh, maybe a WAN status light, LAN 1, LAN 2, LAN 3, oh yes, that one must be WAN status. Um, whether it's doing WPS, I guess, so you've pressed WPS button, it'll probably uh, flash on that one. USB, and then the telephone, which will be for VoIP. 
on the top of the device we've got a Wi-Fi button and a WPS button. Left side of the device is nothing. Right hand side of the device is also nothing. The underside of the device is the label which uh, 12 volts 1.5 amps for the power supply and has the wireless details, so username and password, uh, that are defaults on it. And on the back you've got holes for mounting it on a wall, physical power button where the power plugs in, your factory reset hole there, USB socket, VoIP socket, so that's your telephone or VoIP ATA, so if you configure this with a VoIP account, that's where you need to plug in your analog phone. LAN 1, LAN 2, LAN 3, and then your WAN port. You've also got over here some kind of fancy shiny sticker, or holographic sticker. Warranty, and presumably under there is a screw. Doesn't feel like there's a screw hole under there, but it's uh, still a warranty sticker of some sort. I will go through the manual very quickly. If you want to read it, please use the pause button because I'm just literally going to hover over the uh, bits of paper. And uh, if you want to read it, then please just pause the video. So USB applications, media server, USB storage and remote access, so it doesn't look like it can do print sharing. There's the LED status details, which pretty much I have guessed, although I obviously didn't know what flashing and on and stuff means. And some safety information. Next we will move on to turning that device on and seeing how quickly it takes to boot and see what the web interface looks like. If you do want to see that video it will be a separate one linked to in the description so have a look there and just another reminder have a look at the links at the bottom to further videos about this so how to factory reset it and what the web interface and what the app looks like. On the laptop over here I've got it pinging the internet I've got an Ethernet cable, which is a black cable running around here into the back of the TP-Link router. And um, then I've got the grey cable going into the WAN port of the router. So let's plug it in and see what the lights do and see how long it takes to boot. So I'm not expecting that number two of the LAN lights has come on. I feel like I'm plugged into number, well, one of the edge ones, so either number one or number three. Uh, we'll figure that one out in just a moment. The two Wi Fi lights, so the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz, come on. Ah, oh, that's more like it. So, yeah, I don't know why number two came on, because now it's uh, finished booting. Indeed, we've got number three, which is the one I'm plugged into, and the internet light is on. I now have an IP address from the router, and I have access to the internet. So that's the boot-up process of this router, and we're now online. I am going to press the WPS button just to see how quickly or how long you have to press it for it to activate. So a brief press is actually all you need to activate the WPS function of the router. Turning wireless off, let's see how long you have to press that. 
and a very brief press is all you need as well to switch off the Wi-Fi. Let's turn it back on. A brief press and then you have to wait a bit of time and then it seems to have turned back on. I'll now move on to filming the web interface and the app. That will be a separate video so if you're interested in that have a look at the links in the description of this video and hopefully this has been helpful to you. If it has it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notification switched on but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thanks very much.